Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. This is kind of sudden to ask you guys, but do you really know how to take a screenshot on your iPad in the right way? I assume many of you take a screenshot to save your favorite screen, but you may not be making use of the screenshot feature fully. So today I want to introduce you to all the hacks of screenshot features you didn't know about. I promise you'll find a lot of things you didn't know, so please watch this video until the end. Okay, starting with some basics for taking a screenshot here, though I don't think this is even necessary to say, but you can press the power button and the volume button to take a screenshot. This works with the iPad Pro, but for iPad or iPad mini, the one with the home button, long press the home button and the power button at the same time to take a screenshot. You can also do it with your Apple Pencil. Swipe either from left or right like this to take a screenshot. This works from either side even though I did it from the left side just now, you could do it from the right side too. As a tip when taking a screenshot with your Apple Pencil, you can take it better by pulling from slightly outside of the screen or where the black edge is. Some people have told me this didn't really work well when they try to swipe from the edge of the screen, but tip here is swipe from the black part right here. As you probably know this by now, but it makes sounds when you take a screenshot. But in case you want to turn off the sounds, if you go to the control center at the top, there is this bell icon, and by turning this off, you can take a screenshot without making any sounds. For these screenshot images, you can save them anywhere you like. As you tap this down button here at the upper left, it will show you options to save in your camera roll or your files. If I save one in my camera roll, then it should be saved here. As I scroll down, you can find a category that says screenshot, so I'll tap it, and all the data of screenshot images can be found here. So it might be a good idea to take a look at this screenshot folder when you want to look back at your screenshot images. Next, let's save images in your file. As you tap on the second button from down right here, your picture can be saved in your file. Here in your file app, you get to save iCloud Drive, Google Drive, Dropbox, and other server. And you get to save it directly here. For instance, you could create a new folder like this. So I could create a new folder named Screenshot iPad as an example. And make sure to always save it here in the folder, so it'll be easier to look at them later. For anything that's saved in iCloud Drive, you can see it both on your iPhone or on your Mac, so please use whichever device you want to use. For these screenshot images, in case you change your mind and you don't want to save one anymore, or you save one by accident for instance, tap either this delete screenshot or trash box icon on the upper right here. This way it can be removed without being saved anywhere. Next, let me introduce you to markup feature when taking a screenshot. This pencil-like mark appears on the screen like this at the bottom, and using this I'm taking a screenshot of this website as an example. And it comes in really handy when I want to add some comments saying things like make this image bigger or make this logo bigger. You can find several types of brushes here including highlighters, pencil, and pen brushes too, so it can be helpful for drawing and other things as well. Not many people know about this, but you can find this slider at the top here, and by moving this slider to the left or right, the base image becomes transparent like this. This makes it easier to see these text and the color in front, so it may be a good idea to use this feature when you want people to pay attention to your comments over the image. Now go ahead and press this plus button next to this marker brush. This will give you more options to choose from here, including arrow tool and speech bubble tool. It would be a good idea to use this arrow tool when you want to specify your points like this. They've got other things such as text and signature too, and these are really helpful so please give it a try. 
When you want to save a part of the screenshot image, since you can trim an image right after taking a screenshot like this with your fingers, and what I suggest here is to save the image after trimming it. Otherwise, it can be a hassle to trim each image after taking a screenshot of all the images later. So please keep in mind to trim your image right after taking a screenshot. What comes in handy when taking a screenshot of a web page is a full page screenshot. Once you take a screenshot and select the right tab that says full page at the top, you get to save the entire website from top to bottom in one page in a PDF format. This way you won't need to take a screenshot of each part of the entire website and instead you could just take a screenshot of a full page, making things a lot easier for you to add comments later, etc. So please remember this. Actually, this full screen screenshot feature can be used in other Apple apps too. For instance, I have Keynote, an app for making some presentation slides by Apple Open right now. I just created these slides with a list of images, and let's say we want to save these in PDF. In this case, take a screenshot of the previous screen. And these tabs should appear again just like earlier, so tap the full page tab. Now you can see every page of Keynote saved in PDF. Tap Done at the upper left and save it in your files. Or if you go to the Share button at the upper right, you can also share by email directly. I think this would be super useful, especially for those who often make their presentation slides, so please remember this. So remember to take a screenshot of the previous screen in Keynote and save it in PDF. Now let's go ahead and use a different app by Apple. There's this app called Pages, but do you guys use this app? It's an app mainly used for creating some documents and for writing, where you can insert images here or there in between text. For this one too, you can export from the icon at the upper right to make a PDF. And as you take a screenshot here, you can find a top full page as I mentioned earlier. So you can export all in PDF. As we've done Keynote and Pages so far, let's take a look at Numbers at last. You can also save documents created in Numbers and not for spreadsheet calculations in PDF. How you work with Numbers is that you basically create a page under these tabs at the top set by category. And here too, go ahead and take a screenshot. Now you should see this tab full page at the top again. And what it does is that they categorize all the pages by tab. I was super impressed when I found out about this feature for the first time. I don't really do spreadsheet calculations, but it was so good that it made me want to use it more often. So I highly recommend this, especially if you work on this stuff a lot. You don't need to export every time from the button at the upper right. And you could just take a screenshot and save it in PDF. I'm sure this will definitely help you be more productive. Next, I doubt you use this often, but there's this thing called Assistive Touch and Accessibility. So, Assistive Touch, which can be found in Accessibility. Try turning this on. Now you should have this black button on the screen. This one basically plays a supportive role when the power button or the Apple Pencil isn't working. Having this assistive touch turn on, if you look at the bottom part here, you can assign touch shortcuts. For instance, let me set this double tap right here and select screenshot. Now double tap this assistive button. This way you can take a screenshot. You can assign double tap, one tap and stuff on your own. But if you triple tap, this control center of assistive touch appears on the screen. And you could take a screenshot here as well. So please do this in whichever way you prefer. I don't think you'll be using this button often. 
but it might be a good idea to keep this in mind just in case. At last, let me show you a way to take a screenshot using the keyboard. I'm using my magic keyboard right here, but it's totally fine to use a regular one as well. As you tap Command, Shift, and 4, you can take a basic screenshot. There's one more thing to remember here. If you do Command, Shift, and 3 instead of 4 this time, the image doesn't get displayed and disappears toward the bottom left of the screen like this. So when you want to just keep taking screenshots and save them in your camera roll, please remember to do Command, Shift, and 3. This is with Command, Shift, and 4 where the image is displayed on the screen after taking a screenshot. Before I end, I want to introduce you a way to take a screenshot by connecting your Mac to your iPad. This is a must-watch if you're a Mac user. Open Mac, press Command, Shift, and 4 to take a screenshot of a part of the screen. Then, the image you took a screenshot of or the screen will be shared with your iPad through Apple ID like this. Isn't this super cool? On a side note, there is this iPad like button here at the top of Mac, and as you tap this, it will be displayed on your iPad. So now that the screen is shared with the iPad, let me try and add some comments with a markup feature. This way, as you can see, the same thing is reflected on my Mac. I actually learned about this lately, and I find it super helpful, so please use this if you're a Mac user. Alright, that was all about the complete guide to taking screenshots today. What do you think? It would be great if you found any feature that made you go, oh, this is great, but you didn't know that before. And please give a thumbs up if you like this video. I personally work with graphics a lot, so I often take screenshot of these images or pictures that I like and save them. But please let me know what you guys use the screenshot feature for in the comment section down below. I've been doing some tutorials and hacks for Apple apps a lot lately, and I'll be receiving a lot of positive feedbacks, so for those who haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!